After a rather peaceful night, we woke with the dawn chorus. I woke extremely well rested, but I wasn't going to tell Dunceface that. His head was big enough as it was without that. I managed to squirm out from under Kirishima's wing and nudged you both away. Surprisingly, Kirishima wasn't whining about wanting more sleep, but instead woke with a yawn and a mighty stretch before helping me get breakfast ready. Guess that idiot's sleep magic worked after all. I ate mine quickly and set about packing what I could of the camp. I was eager to get back on the road, mostly because I was ready to send that annoying bard on his way so he could continue to travel in relative peace. It would take us roughly six hours to reach the fork in the road that would send Dunn's face to follow Kirk and us to Milicin. And honestly, it couldn't come fast enough. All right. Are you all done eating yet? Mm-hmm. I've been done for a bit now. That's because you inhale everything you eat, you gluttonous lizard. <laughs> yeah... The food Kaminari brought was just way too yummy. That's the best breakfast on the go we've ever had, I think. You gotta travel with us more often. <laughs> I'd love to travel with the three of you again sometime after this. Especially if it means I get to be in the company of this lovely traveler again. Well... Few idiots are done eating. Then pack up all your stuff. Most of it's already all packed up. Traveler's just finishing their slice of bread. So hold your horses, would you? You ought to be the most grumpy and patient prince I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. You know that, Kachan? You think that's some kind of insult? At least I'm not an absolute harlot around every person I meet. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Big words coming from a smelly barbarian brute who can embed anyone even if he tried. <laughs> who are you calling smelly? At least I don't stink like I've been rolling around in a cheap brothel. Besides, some of us have royal blood and can't go sticking our Koski! Don't talk like that in front of the traveler. Come on, relax, would you? It's way too early to be fighting like this. <sighs> and plus, your yelling scared away all the songbirds. We were enjoying those. Good. Those feathery assholes woke me up anyway. Oh, good idea, Traveler. Since Kachan scared all the birds off, maybe you should replace their music with his own. I remember you bragging the other night about being skilled, so... Let's hear it then. Who the hell said I wanted to actually play a song for you lot? Uh, you did? You know, back at the tavern. I was drunk. Promises don't mean anything when I'm drinking. <clears throat> don't cling onto my arm, outsider. I'm not doing it. Come on, Bakugo. You promised. No. Drop it. Well, I guess I win our little contest by default then. <sighs> Honestly, Kachan, you could have just said that your skills were lacking. Nothing to be ashamed of. Music is a delicate art. Something <sighs> that you probably don't really have much experience in. It's okay. Ugh, give me a guitar. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we get to see him play, Traveler. So demanding all of a sudden. Here. Play a duet with me, your highness. <laughs> Fine. I'll start. You can follow my lead. Sure. Whenever you're ready. Isn't he amazing? <laughs> you know, he used to play much more before. A couple years ago, he kind of just stopped. He used to play for me when we'd settle in for the night by the fire during our travels. But one evening, we were attacked by bandits who'd heard his song in the night. Awful, I know. Ever since then, he's been weary about it. About playing music. Not just at night, but in general. <sighs> Those bandits made off with all the gold Bakugo had earned over the course of a year. We were on our way back to his land, but... 
After we were robbed, he didn't want to return home. Ever since then, he's been trying to earn more gold to make up for what was lost that night. Sometimes I wonder if he's as selfish as everyone makes him out to be. I think there was a reason that he didn't want to return home empty-handed. A reason he's been saving up as much gold as he can. There. You idiots happy now. Not bad at all, Blasty. You were amazing, Bakugo. I always loved getting to hear you play. You're just as incredible as always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enough with the flattery. Here, take your stupid guitar back. <clears throat> Shut up, outsider. My ears are not red. Now let's go. We're burning daylight. It's kind of funny seeing Kachan so flustered. <laughs> <laughs> Are you three coming or am I doing the rest of this journey alone? We're coming! So, I remember you saying you had a story to tell me about our lovely traveler here. Care to share her while we catch up with Blasty? Oh, right. Uh, hey. Kamanari, we can tell you what's going on, cuz you seem like a trustworthy friend. After all, you did know Bakugo when you both were little. But, please, you have to promise to keep this to yourself, okay? We don't exactly know everything about the gem that the Traveler has and the magic that it might harness. Uh, gem? Mmm. Yeah, it's, uh bit of a situation. So, you have to promise us you won't tell anyone about this, because we think we might be getting trailed. So if you do, it might not end well for you. I won't let the Traveler or Bakugo come to harm because of a loose tongue. Whoa, that got pretty intense all of a sudden. It's as serious as all that, huh? Well, I swear an oath on my name and honor as a bard that your secret is safe with me. Don't worry. Thank you, Kaminari. Do you want to tell him, Traveler? Or should I? Whichever is more comfortable for you. If you ask me, I thought opening up to that idiot was a terrible idea. After everything that had happened with the bandits, I knew it was for the best to keep our little excursion between the three of us. And... <sighs> Well, I suppose Deku and that icy hot bastard as well. But, Kaminari, as annoying as he was, he was trustworthy. So, even though I could hear you telling him everything behind me, I kept my mouth shut as we walked on. You told him of the gem, of how it transported you here from your own world. You told him of how we must get to the Strihorn Mountains as the stars align just right in order for you to return home. It was a lot to take in, and of course Dunn's face was both intrigued as he was confused. That is an incredible story, Traveler. I can see why Blasty's in such a hurry now. I've honestly never heard of such magic before. If it's all right with you, may I take a peek at that gem you mentioned? No, no. The gem is to stay with Traveler at all times. Sorry, Kamanari. Oh, no! I understand. I was just curious. Magic that can transport you between realms is unheard of. I know that there is a race of dragons that are said to be able to harness teleportation magic. But that's only for this realm, not across different ones. Mm. The Azures. Right. I couldn't remember which flight it was. I wonder if that stone has any connection with that kind of magic. Either way, that's truly incredible. Hmm. 
If we see any Azures, maybe we could ask them. Might be a little hard, though. From what I've heard, they've been kind of keeping to themselves after their war with the Evans. Not that I blame them. Yeah, I'll be honest. I've seen most every flight of dragon from Crimson's to Golden's, but... I've never actually seen an Azure before. Only heard of them. Pretty reclusive, aren't they? Hmm, they are. Yeah, Outsider, there's different colors of dragons. Each one makes up a flight, as they're called. Since I already know you're gonna ask, there's the Goldens and the Argents. Those two were the first two made by the Celestials. Followed up by the Ebons, the Crimsons, the Emeralds, and the Azures. Each flight is sort of specialized in their own way. And those flight's first elders gave gifts to the mortal races. Mm -hmm. Like Emeralds, for instance. Their first queen was the one who gave the elves their immortality and gifted healing magic to the world. As Crimsons, my mothers tell me that our first king brought the secrets of the deep earth and taught the dwarves everything they know about stonework, metalworking, and jewels. <laughs> it is pretty neat, huh? Don't worry, traveler. I'll tell you more about the flights later. It's a lot, and I don't want to overload you on all the history just yet. Good thing we have a long ways to go still, so I'll have plenty of time to tell you. I think you'll enjoy it, Traveler. The stories behind them are very intriguing, and they make good songs too. I've been meaning to write a couple about dragons. Such a beautiful species with a rich history, each with their own incredible, diverse cultures. As the three of you talked about this and that, hours went by. The sun climbed higher into the sky, the shadows shrinking away as noon approached. We neared a small break in the forest, the path opening up into a wide sunny meadow. It was here that the road we were on split, one path heading to the northeast, the other to the northwest. And it was time to say our goodbyes to the annoying bard. Hmm, well... I suppose this is where our paths split, my friends. Falkirk is just two days travel up this path here. Aw, oh, so soon? Not soon enough. <laughs> it was a pleasure getting to travel alongside you three. Thanks for accompanying me here. Journeying with friends is far better than going it alone. Ha! <laughs> friends, sure. Aw, come on. Don't be like that, Blasty. Who knows when we'll get to see each other next. It's been fun, Kaminari. Having a bard in our ranks is always perfect for lightening up the mood. Also, you're gonna have to tell me where you got all that yummy food from. <laughs> Just stop by an elven stall next time you see one in the market. They are masters of delicious trail rations. Watch it though, they can be a smidge on the pricey side, so... I don't think Kachan will spoil you that much. <sighs> don't you have somewhere to be, Dunceface? Cause I know we do. Well... I'm off then. It was nice to meet you, Kirishima. And great to see you again, Kachan. And Traveler. Hmm. Would you mind giving me your hand? Hmm. <sighs> hey. Farewell, my lovely Traveler. Oi! Back off of them! <laughs> you know, Kachan, maybe if you got your head out of your own butt, you'd admit to your feelings. Uh, farewell! Feelings. As if. That idiot. Spouting nonsense as always. His electricity magic must be frying his brain. Come on, you two. We've got a ways to go yet. Right behind you. Come on, traveler. Having finally said our goodbyes to the bard, we continued on our way along the path. Glenfarn was a strange forest. Expansive, but with meadows and clearings interspersed throughout, carefully made by the elves as a way to provide respite for travelers. We had five and a half days left before we would reach the outpost of Milicent, and we made good use of our time until then. Kirishima started teaching you how to forage. Since your nose wasn't as sharp as his, 
He was careful to explain and show you the plants and herbs that were safe to eat and what ones had medicinal properties. <laughs> we decided to leave the mushroom foraging to him though. The last thing we needed was to accidentally end up eating something poisonous. I, on the other hand, focused on your bow training as we went. You still had the habit of holding your arrow in that weird otherworldly way of yours. But you were learning. You were becoming more and more proficient with it. I let you practice whenever we had a spare moment, and I had to admit, I was impressed. Seems the time in Hedera made you keen to get even better. And who was I to tell you no? <laughs> I even recall waking up one night to see you practicing under the moonlight by yourself. You were set on actually becoming a part of the team rather than a burden. And I appreciate you for that. Even if I did snap at you to come back to bed so you'd be rested enough. It was a peaceful enough journey. The three of us working our way through the forest with little trouble. The trees grew larger and taller as we walked. Soon enough, we finally reached the outpost. Milicin was situated in a grove of large trees, houses, and even stores built into their enormous sturdy trunks. There were large twisted vines and branches that spiraled up the trees and grand staircases to lead up onto the higher level of the outpost. Between the trees, sturdy bridges were created by growing vines and branches together. Soft glowing flowers decorating them and giving light to those who walked along. It looked peaceful. Even with archers perched high high above the lower city, sharp eyes and bows ready to handle any who sought to disrupt the peace. The canopy above was thick and lush, but still allowed for dappled sunlight to drape over everything. People busily moved about the place. A veritable mixing pot of different races, some coming from the coast, Others from the mountains to the far north. Oh, this place is beautiful. So much green. And the trees are so tall. They're almost like the ones back home. The sun looks so pretty shining through them. Whoa. Uh, and look at how high those platforms up there are. There's so many houses and vendors. I'm going to go stock up on rations and water. Maybe some elven potions. You put a dent in our food supply as always. Sorry. <laughs> you know I'm a growing dragon, Bakugo. I need to eat lots. We can come help you. I want to see what kind of tasty things the vendors have. Uh-uh. No. Absolutely not. That's just asking for trouble. You two go do your own thing. I'm going to do this alone. Because I know you idiots are going to pester me to buy more than we need. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, this place seems safe enough to split up for a bit anyways. Oh, Bakugo. Yeah? Can you pick up some of that honey bread that Kaminari had? In the Sunberry Jam? Oh, that stuff was amazing. <sighs> yeah, yeah, fine. Mm. Meet me here by this tree in two hours. You got me? Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Uh, Bakugo, stay safe. And don't leave the town without us, okay? Just in case. Same goes to you idiots. <laughs> and stay together. We don't need any incidents while we're here. Got it. <laughs> I wasn't planning on leaving Traveler's side anyways. Hmm. Good dragon. Hmm. Here. Half of the share I got from selling the spider silk. You both deserve a cut too. Make sure to replace your swords if you can find ones at a reasonable price, Kirishima. Elves are pretty fond of dragons, so you might be able to swing a discount. Wow, that gross stuff sold for this much? <laughs> Thank you, Bakugo. I hope we can find something. Mm-hmm. But don't get any ideas. I'm not giving you any more than that. Now, it's your coin and all, but don't spend it all, understand? We're gonna need it when we get to the coast. Passage across the sea isn't going to be cheap during this time of year. Not with the mermaids being active. So we need to make sure we have enough. Hmm. Now go on, both of you, and stay out of trouble. You got it. <laughs> Let's go, Traveler. What do you want to look at first? Oh, how about over there? 
With his sights set on one of the many booths, Kirishima dragged you over and the two of you began your exploration of the marketplace. There were vendors of all sorts, mostly elves, but they were beings of other races too. And of course, Kirishima wanted to take a look at every single table and store. There were merchants selling clothes, jewelry, food and spice, potions and spell scrolls, and some were even selling useless shiny trinkets, the kinds that had that dumb dragon's eye sparkling. The two of you explored it all, everything this place had to offer. But when you turned a corner, you spotted a blacksmith forge, set up in a small clearing within the market square. The fire, of course, kept far away from the trees. There was the steady sound of a hammer on metal, and at the anvil was another dragon. This one was different from Kirishima. There were some similarities. Big ass tail, huge wings, but the horns that poked out from under his head swooped forward rather than back, and his scales were silvery, the color of freshly polished steel. He looked up, a silver-scaled, pointed ear twitching when he sensed you two approaching. And when he and Kirishima locked eyes, it was a moment of mayhem. No way! Tetsu? Kirishima? Is that you? <laughs> hey! See, Hilta Teikoshi. Koyu ye get talk of you. Koi tapo ae koan wars yak drun. Savabore wooks tell you ten paiso. See, Hilta Teikoshi. Koyu ye get talk of you. See, a fubanan se vern tebura. Levidre Penik. Ah, who's your friend? Oh, Tetsu. This is Traveler. We're helping them journey somewhere, um, very important. Oh, okay. <laughs> Selfless as always, I see. <laughs> ah, Traveler. This is my scale brother, Tetsu Tetsu. We've known each other since, well, since we were whelps. <laughs> <laughs> since before then, rocks for brains. Our mothers tended our eggs next to one another. <laughs> so, tell me, just where are you heading anyways? <clears throat> Wait, are you sure, Traveler? The Strihorn Mountains? Ajaro, hey, what kind of madman's journey are you two on? Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I promise we're being as safe as we can. <laughs> I kind of doubt that. Don't think I didn't notice that those swords I made for you are missing. Ah... Uh... Yeah, I, uh, kinda lost them in this whole big mess a ways back. I got cursed and Bakugo to fight me the whole night to help me break it, and... I remember using them to kill the mage that cursed me, but... Then I think I dropped them when I stumbled my way back to camp to try and find everyone and just... Yeah. It was a mess. Is that so? <laughs> Never a dull moment with you, Red. At least that much hasn't changed. Hmm. Tell you what, I'll take care of you two today. If you try to go to those mountains without a reliable weapon, you're as good as dead. And as handy as a bow is, having just one method of defending yourself isn't wise. Give me that one on your hip there, Traveler, and I'll trade you for one a bit more reliable. <laughs> Perfect. You two wait here. I'll be right back. We'll be right here. Oh... I didn't expect to see Tetsu here. Talk about a blessing. He's one of the best blacksmiths the Argents have to offer. Whatever we get from him, we'll be in good hands, Traveler. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like him. He really is a great friend. Well, he's more like my brother, if I'm being honest. Like he said, we were raised together. That's why we're called Scale Brothers. His parents came to the Elder Spine seeking refuge when the humans pushed into the Argent territories. Our flights made an alliance, and when we ran the humans out of there, he and his family went back. It was about around the time when we were both just barely out of our whelpling scales, but <laughs> we're still as close as ever. Huh? Oh, yeah, Tuts is an Argent. I see you remembered what Blasty said a while ago about the different flights. All right, one pair of swords for you, Ajiro. Oh, thanks. Ah, uh -huh. these feel perfect, T. Whoa, 
so sharp. And they've got just the right amount of heft to them. They're even better than my old ones. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can show your thanks by not losing them again, all right? <laughs> you have my word. I'll take good care of them. Good. And this is for you, Traveler. Much better than that dull bread knife you were using. Careful. It's very sharp. I threw in some extra arrows, too. And don't even think about paying me. This is a gift from me to you two. If you're dead set on going to those cursed mountains, what kind of brother would I be if I didn't help out at least a little? Huh? Tatsu, are you sure? These are so nice. I feel sort of bad for just taking them. <laughs> Don't get your tail in a knot about it. It's fine. Huh? What's that? You guys in need of another weapon? You're right, Traveler. Bakugo still hasn't gotten a replacement yet for the sword he lent me back in the Hedera Forest. The Hedera Forest? You guys are seriously crazy. <laughs> uh-huh. Like I said. Long story. But yeah, like Traveler said. You remember Bakugo, T. <laughs> How could I forget someone like him? I still can't wrap my mind around why he spent so much time with that foul-tongued barbarian. <laughs> yeah, he definitely does stand out, doesn't he? He does mean well, though, I promise. <laughs> well, he lost one of his swords, so I was wondering if maybe we could get a replacement from you. Well, duh, that's what I'm here for. What are you looking for? You said it was a set, so I'm assuming you need something specific. Mm-hmm. He uses these dual scimitar-type swords. Not too long, but pretty hefty. Do you have anything like that kicking around? Here, in Mielison. Nah, haven't needed to make any scimitars since I got here. They're not exactly in demand for the elves. But, I can customize one for you. Ah, oh, you do that? Thank you, T. I can always count on you. Of course you can, Red. Now, let's see. You see any swords in my inventory that have roughly the same size and length as his? Hmm, let's see. What do you think, Traveler? I'm leaning a bit towards that one there. Kinda seems like it'd be a similar size. Can I hold it for a second? Just to see if the weight is right. Yeah, go ahead. Oh man, this is really light. Could you add some more weight around here and here? About four pounds worth. That heavy, huh? All right, I can handle that. Sadly though, I won't be able to just give you this one. It's a pretty expensive weapon. I use a lot of really high quality metals for it. How expensive are we talking? About 550 gold. <laughs> but I won't charge you guys for the customization of it. Yikes, you weren't kidding. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Well, Bakugo gave me a share of what he got from some ghoul spider silk. Is this enough? Hmm. Looks here like you're a bit short. <sighs> Damn. Well, how short are we talking? Hmm. What have you got there, Traveler? Clothing? Huh. Would you look at that? I'm not much of a tailor, but... This is some really high quality stuff. Never seen anything quite like this material before. All right, how about this, you two? I'll cut you a deal. I'll take the coin here, these clothes, and if Red lets me use his scales to sharpen the sword, we'll call it square. <laughs> but, Traveler, those are the last of your clothing from your world. Huh? I think... Bakugo didn't make you sell that stuff because he still wanted you to have at least a little piece of where you came from. Are you... sure about this? Hold on. From... their world? Hey, have you been headbutting rocks again? No. <laughs> I'll tell you more about it later, I promise. But, let's just say those clothes are... sort of sentimental. <laughs> alright, alright. Far be it for me to separate someone from their keepsakes. You can keep one piece of what you're offering, Traveler. And I'll take that story in exchange for it next time you're in town, Red. 
holding you to it. <laughs> sure thing, T. We appreciate this. Like a lot. Ah, it's no problem. Now, you two sit tight. I'm gonna get to work on this. Can we watch? It's been forever since I've seen you work, and I think you'll really like this traveler. Argents are experts at the anvil. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. Just make sure you put those goggles on over there. I use my flames while I work, and I don't want you two going blind. Yeah, no, we don't need that. Here, traveler, just slip them on like this, see? Perfect. Now just stand here with me, okay? I'll shield you with my wing while he works. With the proper safety precautions in place, you two watched as Tetsu worked. The flames he used were much different than Kirishima's. They were blinding white. The heat and light filling the small space whenever he would blow a small stream of the flame out onto the weapon, adjusting its weight and hammering it back into shape. You watched in awe as he worked the weapon into something close to the one I'd lost. And you were even more shocked when Kirishima showed off another of his draconic magics. He hardened the ruby scales of his tail, and apparently, this gave Tetsu the perfect whetstone to sharpen the now-finished blade. You three were so absorbed in the process, you didn't notice the time slipping away until it was almost too late. Huh. This looks almost identical to Bakugo's sword. Yeah? What do you say then, huh? Do you think it's done? Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, traveler, what's wrong? You look a little surprised. Oh! <laughs> my tail? Yeah. I guess I haven't really shown you my magic yet, have I? I can harden my body. It's, uh, not the strongest of magics, but it's very useful when it comes to defense. Not the strongest? <laughs> Hardening magic is extremely strong and versatile, thank you very much. I have it too, see? Except mine's a bit different. My skin can turn to steel while Age Rose is... Huh. I think the best way to describe it is that it's primal earth magic. It can just keep getting harder and harder. Unbreakable by anything. <laughs> Even the grouchy prince's explosion magic. Well, when you put it that way... <laughs> hmm? Oh, <laughs> no, Traveler. Not all Crimsons can do this. This magic was passed down through my family line. Everyone's is a bit different. All right, here's this sheath for it. Tell him to take better care of this one or I'll kick his ass myself. <laughs> Don't worry, he will. He actually lost it because of me, so it was only right to replace it. Huh? What was that, Traveler? Wait, no. It's not that late already, is it? Ah, uh, Bakugo's gonna kill us. We gotta go, T. Thanks again for everything. Come on, Traveler. Hurry. Stay safe, you two. Take it easy out there. You got it! Crap, Traveler. We totally lost track of time. Uh, I hope he wasn't waiting for us for too long. I'd hate to make him worry. There's the meeting spot just up ahead. Come on, I see him. And he doesn't look too happy. Hey, Baku- There you idiots are. I told you to meet me here in two hours. You're nearly half an hour late. Uh, I know, sorry. We got a little preoccupied with something. You better have a good excuse for concerning me like that. Thought you two morons got yourself captured again or something. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, Bakugo. We're okay. But, well, we think you might like what we got you. What is it? You better not have spent all the coin I gave you. <laughs> Let's not concern ourselves with that right now. Uh, here. It's from both of us. This is... You two seriously got this for me? Yup. Do you like it? Hmm. Feels even better than my old one. This is engraved open moon steel. <laughs> It'll do. Thanks, you idiots. Oh, I'm happy you like it, Kotsky. It still means the world to me that you gave up one of your weapons to save my life. 
It's quite literally the least we could do, you know. Hmm. Kirishima? <laughs> yeah? How much was this sword? Uh, uh, well, you really like it, don't you? So that's all that matters. <sighs> Damn lizard. Stop trying to change the subject. Now, how much? Uh, well, if I'm being honest, I may have spent all the coin you gave me since it was a custom, but our traveler had to help out too. <sighs> how am I not surprised you managed to spend 500 gold in the span of two hours? I swear, you are the only dragon in all of Solterra that spends more coin than you hoard. How do you help anyways, outsider? You barely have anything to your name. You seriously? You idiot. You gave away the last thing you had from your world? Uh, almost. Tetsu cut us a deal so they have at least one piece left. Uh, still. Well. I appreciate it. Or whatever. This sword is really high quality. Anyways, we're burning daylight. We're stocked and rearmed, so let's get a move on before sundown. And before you ask, shitty scales, no, we are not stopping for lunch. Here, just eat this on the way. I got your stupid bread. <gasps> you found it? <sighs> in the jam too? Yeah, in the damn jam. Here. Just don't get it all over your clothes. We don't have time to stop and wash them in a river. Again. There's some cheese and sausage in there too. So share with the outsider, alright? I already ate a share. Oh, this looks amazing! Here, traveler. Here's your hat. And with the food situation handled, we set off from the quaint little town of Milicent. I honestly wish we could have stayed longer. Elven towns and cities always left me with a sense of comfort in a way. With the calm and serene atmosphere, the gentle sway of the trees, and the influx of many different races that both live and travel through them. The feel of elven territories were far different from the human ones. Far more accepting, calm. It was a shame that we didn't have the time to spend at least one night there. But alas, it was already midday and we needed to cover more ground. We had about a week of travel until we reached the Silver Spray Coast. We leave Milicent and make our way through the forest paths till we emerge from the trees, only to be left stunned at what lay before us. It made me pull out Deku's map again and double check it. Because there was supposed to be a ginormous elven bridge that spanned the length of the massive canyon that lay before us. But instead, in its wake, was nothing but the remains of what used to be a bridge. <laughs> what in the Celestial has happened here? Uh, it looks like the bridge was destroyed. But how? No clue. Look, there's an elven guard up ahead. Come on, let's see if he knows what happened. And if there's a way to get across. Hey, guard. What happened to the bridge? Greetings, travelers. The bridge is under repair after a dragon attack. A dragon attack? Why would a dragon take out the bridge? We've been trying to understand it ourselves. I've never seen anything quite like it. I was here at my post when it attacked. It took out the entire bridge before we could even draw our weapons. And then it just flew off. But, why? Tch. That doesn't make any sense. Dragons haven't ever been at war with elves as far as I know. What color was it? Those sharp-ass elven eyes had to have seen what color it was. The attack happened last night, so I could be wrong, but I believe its scales were black. Which is concerning. Yeah, no shit. Fuck. An ebon dragon? Why would it do this? What would it have to gain from destroying a bridge and then just 
flying off. Your guess is as good as mine, Sir Crimson. But we have an alternate route marked out with glimmer blooms if you wish to continue on your way. Sadly, the detour will take you about a week on foot. You gotta be kidding. That's way too far. Hey, Bakugo. If you think it'd be safe, I could fly us across. Please, just let me help. It'll save us days of travel. Well, we're in elven territory now, so the threat of being shot down or trailed by poachers is a lot less significant. Although, the knowledge that there's an ebon dragon in the area is concerning. If I may, because of the attack, we've doubled the guards within the forest, so your scaly friend should be perfectly safe. See? It'll be fine, Bakugo. Mm. Yeah, like the Traveler said. We'll be careful, and if I sent any strange dragons, I'll land straight away. I promise. Please, please, please... Ugh, fine. As long as you both knock that off. Huh. Honestly, you're like a pair of whelplings sometimes. Is it fine if he shifts here? Of course. I'll alert the other guards that you'll be flying overhead. Yes! Okay, you guys stand back. Hey, it's all right. He's not going to hurt you, outsider. He's not cursed. He's still himself, just a bit bigger. Promise, it's okay. Look at that face. <laughs> you really think he'd hurt you? Go on. You can give him a pat on the nose. He's bowing for you. Here. Just like this. Stroke his nose. Yeah. He understands you perfectly, outsider. Just because he's in his true form doesn't mean he's a dumb animal or some shit. Older dragons can speak telepathically. Kirishima here can't. Not yet, at least. Although, I think his eyes are expressive enough to speak a thousand words. Ugh! What did I say about licking me? Cut it out! You're soaking me, you overgrown lizard! It's not adorable, outsider. It's gross. Ugh. Ha! <laughs> Not so cute when he's slobbering all over you, huh? Huh. <laughs> Alright. Enough wasting time. Let's go. Kirishima! Put your head down so we can get situated. Outsider. Go sit in front of me. <clears throat> Just relax. You're not going to fall, and even if you did, Kirishima would catch you. Now, brace yourself. Takeoff is the second roughest part of flight. What's the first? <laughs> Landing, idiot. Now relax. Hold onto his horns nice and tight. Put your hands just underneath mine. You won't hurt him. <laughs> you ready, outsider? Hiroshima, let's go. Hold tight! I got you! Relax! Keep holding on tight, you hear me? And open your eyes. You're wasting an amazing view. <laughs> Keep it steady, Kirishima! Good dragon. You hanging in there, outsider? Just a bit longer. We just have to get above that cloud layer way up there. Then it'll be smooth sailing. Uh, don't dive down, idiot! <laughs> it's been a while since he's gotten a fly like this. He's excited. <laughs> Easy. Don't go scaring the outsider now. Come on. Take us up past the clouds.
<sighs> there. A lot smoother up here now that we can glide. What do you think? You ever seen a view like this one before? Breathtaking, isn't it? <laughs> you look shaken up. What? Never ridden a dragon? Keep flying for as long as you can, Kirishima. We'll get to the coast much quicker this way. Feels good to finally fly again, doesn't it, big guy? Thought so. Don't be so tense, traveler. Just loosen up. I'm right behind you. Enjoy the ride. You're not gonna fall. I had to admit, it felt foreign. Calling you as Kirishima did, but to me, you were no longer just an outsider. You'd saved my dragon's life. You'd given up sentimental items for me of all people. Protection and sacrifice. Two of the things my people held sacred. You didn't even realize you had fulfilled them. So no, you were no longer an outsider to me. Though it would take time to acclimate myself to calling you otherwise. The look on your face was something I'll never forget. Awe and surprise, melting into a happiness that reminded me so much of Kirishima. I couldn't help but give you a smirk before turning my attention back towards the sky. As we flew along through the endless sky, I felt a sense of peace and ease, but I kept a lookout. Ebon dragons. They, like the Azures, were exceedingly rare, especially after the war that rocked between the two of them. But unlike their blue-scaled brethren, Ebons were not known as a very friendly flight. They were known for their skill and cunning and were not fond of outsiders. So now that they were out and about was concerning. We didn't see or sense anything dangerous. So tentatively, I allowed myself to relax. It had been a long time since we had gotten to fly. Almost a whole two months since we'd entered human territory. And nearly one month of that had been spent traveling with you. I knew Kirishima was delighted. He hadn't stopped purring the whole time we were in the air. Despite the roadblock, we would not be deterred. I wasn't sure how long Kirishima could fly us for, but if we reached the coast sooner rather than later, we could figure out passage and maybe get a few days ahead of the alignment of the stars. Any breathing room was better than none. 